Well, welcome, welcome to the panel, a warm welcome, and thank you everyone for such an amazing day. Can I just say that? I know we've got a bit more time left, but it's been a really inspiring day. I've really loved the workshops, the conversations I've had. I'm feeling really positive. So in this um, chat, we're going to talk about emotional well-being, which has been a, been a big focus uh, for today, and hear from Fatima and Michael on some of the ideas perhaps that you've heard and seen that we can think about uh, moving forward. But first, um, I'd just like to ask um, His Royal Highness just to share a few thoughts uh, based on what you know, you've heard today. I know this is something you're very passionate about yourself. Thanks, Alex. Um, yeah, welcome to everyone, and I hope you've had a good morning. I know you've had lots of stimulating conversation and heard from some brilliant people. Uh, for Catherine and I, uh, we're here today really as a, as a follow-on from our Heads Together program we started in 2016, uh, trying to tackle the, the stigma and the taboo around mental health. And really where we are is we feel that we've made some progress in that we're all in this room talking about mental health um, and we're chipping away at that stigma, but there's a lot more to do. And I think concrete action and some sort of tangibility to come forwards is the idea of where uh, we'd like to see this space go next. So really today, particularly for me up here, is to hear from uh, all you experts really, uh, including Fatima and Michael here, about what it is you need, what it is that bothers you, what it is that affects your mental health, what do you want to see change. So I'm here to listen and learn from you guys who are um, at the stage in life where there are a number of pressures on you, uh, there are a number of commitments, a number of concerns, and to help us work out what we do next, we, we want to hear from you guys. So thank you for you know, being here today and turning up and, and sharing your experiences, your thoughts, and your concerns, because it helps really formulate a plan and allows everyone to understand that this is a really important part of your future. Well, of course, um, one of the big focuses, I guess, of the Royal Foundation also the mix is to be youth-led and to listen to the voices of young people in how we move uh, forward. So, um, Fatima, I'd love to start by asking you, um, you know, what, what's one skill that you've learned around emotional well-being that you found beneficial, and, yeah, why has it helped? Yeah, I mean, in thinking about this question, it was so hard to isolate one skill because, you know, everything comes together. But I really think the exercises we did today around what um, we l listened to earlier about understanding your emotion and being able to identify it and then coming up with plans and actions around like creating your own personalized well-being toolkit is really important. It's rare that one thing goes wrong in your life. There's often like many things going wrong simultaneously all at once. And just the exercise of, this is how I feel, I'm going to note it down, and this is what I'm going to do about it, I think that's probably the most valuable step. I really like that you um, said there about everyone, you know, everyone's going to have a different approach to it. And um, the idea of having your own emotional and mental toolkit that you'll adapt based on the situation you're in and knowing what you can use yourself. Uh, Michael, I'd love to um, ask you, you know, you've worked with the mix, and obviously you're very passionate about this, this topic. Um, why is it important you know, that, that young people are developed you know, in these areas with mental health, with emotional well-being? Why is it an important topic? Why should we care? I feel like we need to develop these skills and these, these steps in order to become mentally better in a way, basically. We need to understand like, the language. There was a workshop today on understanding emotions that were going on and actually knowing what type of words to use to explain how we feel, explain the emotions that we are, have. And I think those are skills that we need to develop in order to understand how we're feeling, in order to understand like what is going on and is there something that needs to be better and become right again. The, like, the idea of that toolkit we did at the beginning, we did the um, making these toolkits and these uh, well-being plans um, for these personas that you saw, William. And I think it's important that we can identify that sometimes things go wrong and sometimes things might not be being right and stuff. And this is like, you know, how to improve it, how to make it better and how to, you know, find the comfort, find the active, find the distraction and stuff. Um, I think that's yeah, what is important for young people in the skills. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's developing and, and building, upon, building upon that throughout your life as well. We start a lot of this stuff, hopefully, within school as a young age, and then you build on that as you go through your life. And in reality, you still have to practice all of these things. I mean, I'm doing a ma master's at the moment. I'm, I'm studying, I'm doing an essay, and I'm, I'm feeling stressed. I am feeling stressed. I have to kind of recognize that and think, well, what am I going to do to kind of deal with this? Um, Fatima, I'll come back to you. Um, 
you were actually looking through the, the, the posters and things next door with some of the ideas that you've all brought together. I just wondered whether there are a few things there that jump out that you thought, wow, that, that's a great idea that perhaps we can use and develop. Yeah, I mean, my table were, I'm sure all the tables are fantastic, but my table in particular. They're the had, best, is that what you're going to yeah, say? Probably. Yeah, probably. the best table. <laughs> yeah. Objectively, um, we had so many good ideas, and I was telling William earlier. Actually, it was quite funny. Our persona like matched so much of what we were going through at the moment. Just sort of that transition phase of like you finished university, you're 21, 22. People are asking you, "Oh, what are you going to do next? Are you going to do a master's? Are you going to like get an education? Who are you? Um, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have a girlfriend? Do you have this? Um, where do you where are you going to live? Money? Like so many different factors all at once, and yeah, I just think one of the most important things we did in that group was just to recognize how that's a lot. And yeah, the, the, the process of like, let's take a walk, let's journal, let's listen to music. I think, yeah, actionable as well, good. <laughs> do, you, do you think part of it is, is validating that, of realizing what, what we're going through or you know, what young people are facing? Because when I saw that, um, the, the kind of word dump on the, on, the, on the screen earlier of all the challenges young people face, mm. sometimes you have to step back and go, wow, that's, that's quite a lot, lot isn't it? Yeah. It is a lot, but I think us as a generation in particular, we're not scared to put a voice out to authority and say, what you're doing is wrong. This is what we need to do. We're very like social justice oriented and we recognize the problems that are going on and we're brave, like we're a very brave generation. We're like very ready to fix it and hold people in power accountable. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, we'll give that Thank you. And, and Michael, I just wonder, I mean, you mentioned a few things earlier around um, some of the topics raised. Um, anything else to add to those ideas um, you know, that we've discussed already? Yeah, um, one I, first of all, I think my table was a little bit better, but one idea that really came up on our table was this sense of community. Um, we really identified that it's very difficult really for young people at the moment to find a sense of community. We don't really have community hubs like we did before. We don't really have places to go in person really. Like we have social media and social media is such a powerful platform that we use. But we really, really like honed on the idea that, you know, there's, we need places for young people to go to. If that's a place for us to go like to represent like a diverse community, like an LGBT place or a place for people of color to gather and stuff. We don't have those places anymore. And that was something that really, really came up a lot. Some of the work that I've been doing the last few years is really trying to focus on having a place for young people. We've lost, you know, youth clubs, you know, parts that were pivotal in every uh, community for young pe people to go. And I really hope having early support hubs in communities that people can access and get help, but also connect, spend time, you know, enjoy each other's company is, is really important. Um, Prince William, I, I know you've been talking with a lot of the young people here um, this afternoon. Uh, was there a question you wanted to ask um, either of these young people um, on the, this topic of emotional well-being? Uh, there's, there's a lot of questions I'd like to ask you guys. Um, but I think um, one of the things that I'd just like to, to point out is that um, from a skills point of view, which I think all you guys are picking out, the, um, the idea of having this toolbox has really helped me understand what all of us might need in our lives. And I like the analogy of, of having the, the toolbox next to you and that no matter what life throws at you, you want to have a tool in there that can deal with it. Not all of us do because of the way our experiences are or how we've grown up or whatever it might be. But trying to find a toolbox with the, the right tool in there to help every eventuality you come across is really important. But also not freaking out that you might not have that tool and someone else's toolbox near you might have it and you can go to them and ask them for that, that tool to help. I've always helped. I, I've... I, I like that visual analogy, and it's helped me understand why certain people can get into certain pickles. And I think it's really important because we all like a toolbox. We all like to know we've got some, you know, something to fix something with. Um, and so that's been a key part of understanding skills and, and what's needed. And I think if, if I can ask one question to you guys, it's probably, it's probably if you could change one thing, if there's one single change that would have a major impact on your mental well-being, what would it be? Fatima, do you want to start? So in the spirit of like preventative healthcare um, and like general well-being as opposed to like mental health specifically, the thing that affects our mental health the most, whether it's positively or negatively, is relationships and the people we encounter in our lives. So if I could like become a partial dictator one day and do something, um, it would probably be providing 
people who interact with young people and children, like a basic level of understanding around mental health and mental well-being so that they can like properly support um, any young person they encounter because sometimes a negative encounter with someone of authority from a younger age will probably prevent you from seeking further mental health further down the line when it gets worse. So if you had, if parents, I mean, I probably wouldn't like have a law that says you can't be a parent unless you have that, but like <laughs> if it's parents, a difficult one, difficult one to enforce. Difficult one maybe, to enforce. Yeah. yeah, but if parents, teachers, count, school counsellors, anyone who ever interacts with the young people, politicians even, um, if they all had a baseline understanding of mental health and mental well-being and how they can support young people and how they can be supportive. That's a great answer. Michael? Yeah. Um, no, I'd have to agree with Fatima. I really do think we need to... Like, one change I would make is an ability to support our supporters. Like, we have so many supporters out there now. We have so many great organisations in this room with us today. Um, and I think it's now time that we actually support these organisations in helping those young people. Um, like, I know so many charities and organisations out there are really struggling because there's just not enough support out there anymore. There's not enough funding, there's not enough money. If I could make any change, it would be to change that. Um, and it would also... It would also to be support young people within schools as well. I think schools are struggling so much with helping young people, and I think that is such a key place to start like helping young people. I really do think with building their t building their toolbox that you were on about, and I think schools are the best place to start. I mean, the mix we have the Mix Connect, which is a plugin that we try to put onto school websites, um, and it's like a place where young people can go to get the support from the mix, and I think like. Things like that would really, really help schools and relieve them from the stress they may be facing um, with trying to help as many people as possible. Brilliant answer. I, yeah. A brilliant answer, and um, you know, I can't agree more. And I think probably you know, uh, aligns a lot with what the Princess of Wales talks about with kind of early intervention, thinking about the kind of early years, you know, zero to five, but then as soon as people are at that school setting, how do we pick that up and, you know, build that from a young age? Uh, as we draw to a close, a, a bit of fun. Um, perhaps uh, Prince William could share what is in his toolkit or toolbox for, you know, a stressful day. What do you do to kind of release uh, some stress? God, you want me to open that toolbox? Um, <laughs> depends so, what's in it. Yeah, exactly, depends what's in it. So, um, I think for me, um, taking your, I think, just general maintenance, so general mental well-being every day. Things like walking fresh air, getting away from screens is a big yeah. deal. Um, having a laugh, you know, humour for me is a big deal. I, I, I love to laugh and um, you've got to look at the lighter things in life sometimes to, to, to feel good. Um, time with my friends, time with my family, um, things like that really matter to me. But I think it's kind of, it's really important that you have something for everything. Mm -hmm. um, and that for me is all about learning off you guys as well as as I speak to you all I'm thinking in my head actually what you're doing or how you're managing or how you're coping is a really useful strategy so I'm learning off all of you as I go around I meet loads of those people and I'm always doing that in the background because I know I'm going to come across some points where I'm going to be like now what do I do I don't, I don't have a tool for this particular moment what do I do and so you're always trying to learn and adapt from other people and, and work out what what tricks and tips and skills that they've um, experience you could use for yourself. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's probably the the most sort of wider bit of kit in my toolbox I've got. We're all learning. I'm still learning um, uh, day by day about looking after myself and so on. Well, thank you so much to all three of you. It's been amazing to have this conversation, and I just want to fi just finally just say, you know, World Mental Health Day is an opportunity for us all to stop, take stock, and you know look forward with ambition and that's what we should be we should be ambitious because you know i look around this room and i see the future and it, it looks pretty bright to me